Uh, before I introduce Robin Hutchinson from The Bugle, uh, just a couple things. Greg, good to see you. It's looking good. Yeah, a lot of us guys that are follically challenged. Uh, and to Mayor uh, Catcher, she always, uh, just a shout out, she always uh, is involved in the Boys and Girls Club out in Fort Saskatchewan. And uh, over the past number of years, she would donate herself for the day. So if you had a business, uh, she would come out and do whatever. Now, when the massage parlor opened, <laughs> she stopped doing it. <clears throat> um, as we all know, with uh, uh, everything changing with, uh, with politics, there's been a lot of layoffs, and the two fellows in Gander, Newfoundland get laid off, Pat and Mick. So down to the unemployment office they go, and Pat goes in first. She says, and what do you do? He said, I'm a panty stitcher. She said, a what? A panty stitcher. He says, I stitches the elastics into the tongs and into the panties. She gets out her book and she looks and she says, okay, pa oh, here it is, panty stitcher. That's unskilled labor. You're going to get $80 a week. Oh, geez, out he goes. In goes Mick. And what do you do, sir? He said, I'm a diesel fitter. Diesel fitter. Oh, she gets out her industrial book. She's looking, diesel fitter. Oh, that's skilled labor. You're going to get $160 a week. So out he goes. I says, how'd you do by? He said, I'm getting 160 a week. What? He said, I'm getting 160 a week. Well, what the, he goes in, what's the deal here? She said, what do you mean? He's getting 160, yeah. Oh, now I'm getting 80, yeah. She says, well, just let me check again, yeah. Panty stitcher, unskilled, 80, diesel fitter, yeah. Yeah, that's 160, yeah. Oh, so that's how it works. He says, I sit there all day stitching the panties like this. He pulls them over his head and says, yeah, diesel fitter. <laughs> and you're going to use it. You know you're going to use it. <laughs> Robin Hutchinson, a Strath County resident in Sherwood Park since 1979, currently living in the Ardrossan area. He attended F.R. Haythorn uh, for junior high and the Salisbury Composite for his high school. He started with circulation department at the Edmonton Sun in 1987. He was VP of operations at LTCO Incorporated until 2017. He incorporated Bugle Publications in late 2017. Their current publisher, editor, and co-owner of the Strathcona Bugle, the only locally owned newspaper in the area. Ladies and gentlemen, Robin Hutchinson. Check if these are on. Yeah. We're good. I, I want to say I'm not responsible for Gary's jokes, just so we get that clear. Thank you everyone for being here today. Um, Mr. Mayor, Mayor's office, uh, fellow members of the chamber and distinguished guests. I have a few questions here today for the mayor. Um, a couple were given to me from friends and family, nothing to... Uh, to not my family though. Not your family, no. Uh, just people, I asked, I, I put the word out, asked people to say, hey, is there anything you wanna ask the mayor? I was like, well, when do I get a chance to do that? And I said, how about Wednesday? So just a cute, light, light stuff. We're going to keep it light. Um, yes, I'm wearing white socks. That's a long story. Uh, right off the top, Mr. Mayor, with the belief that diversification, manufacturing, and reduced export of raw material will create a more stable working environment for residents, is there any indication that the finished products will become the norm rather than the exception? Well, that's the idea. We are... Uh we're very much into the upgrading and diversification of uh, our energy products. We've put a lot of work into it in Strathcona County, our council. Um, we're part of AIHA, Alberta Industrial Heartland Association. Uh, we have the SIA, Strathcona Industrial Association, in our county. One of our goals, which I mentioned, was 30 by 30. We think there's $30 billion of investment that we can land by 2030. Um, we 
We have other ideas such as a pre-approved regulatory zone and there's been some uptake from that from our new premier. I'm really excited about that. Um, we're, we're introducing resolutions to protect uh, our energy and petrochemical industries and related industries and we're doing all that because we do want to derive as much value as we can out of those resources. When we can ship out of, out of this county and out of this province, when, when they're higher up the value chain, that's a benefit to not only industry, but more importantly to citizens and to their standard of living and ultimately their quality of life. So, yeah, that, that's, I'm very hopeful for it. Excellent, excellent, thank you. Um, secondly, this one was not for me. Uh, with the newly elected UCP provincial government, what are your plans as far as holding the UCP to NDP established agreements? Well, I have big plans to do that, and um, I love that question. I've been carrying this uh, around since I read it. I want to thank the Sure Park News and Lindsay Moray and Travis Dossie. I know they were busy uh, covering uh, the campaigns and haven't had much sleep, but this was in the artic uh, article from Sure Park News on Monday. I'm going to read it. And I'll tell you who, who said this after I say it. Quote, we will continue with the petrochemical diversification program and royalty credits. But we will also expand that because we don't think it is good enough. We will amend the Municipal Government Act to allow for tax holidays and attracting major investments so we can match what Louisiana and Texas offer in petrochemical facilities was also stated that they would amend the Municipal Government Act to allow for pre-approved regulatory zones. That is gold. That is something we've been working on, and that's our new Premier-elect who made that statement. So we're going to be watching that. But that tells me that they get, they get what we're doing here. What we're doing, folks, is we're competing with uh, Louisiana, and we're competing with Pennsylvania to land these big industries, and we can do it as long as we have a level playing field. And things like deferred revenues, all you're doing is your, uh, that's revenue you wouldn't have captured anyway. So uh, you're just delaying receiving something that really, you really didn't have a shot at. So there's a really good story about all this and I'm really um, looking forward to working with our new MLAs on these projects. Thank you so much for that question. <laughs> it's obviously that wasn't mine, it was a good one. <laughs> Um, noticing, um, and I, I've been known to drive around in the middle of the night delivering newspapers, um, I've noticed many empty storefronts in and around the county. Uh, I remember five, six years ago, you'd be hard pressed to find a place to put your little startup business. Um, but now I see a lot of these uh, empty storefronts, a lot of them are mom and pop operations, been there for years, and I know you touched on it earlier in your, your address. Um, is there any incentives in place to help these little guys out outside of the chamber and uh, ones that we're all aware of? Yeah. Well, um, you know, I'm, I'm very aware of that. Uh, we work really closely with the Chamber of Commerce and I think it's a great organization and it is composed a, a lot of medium and small sized businesses. As I mentioned, although there's cause for grounded optimism, yes, there's no doubt that many of these smaller businesses are living uh, month to month. There's no doubt about that. We are going to continue, however, to work hard on the industrial base. The reason for that is that increases the tax base and that um, drives growth. That growth drives the demand for services and that's what we have to uh, provide for small and medium sized businesses to succeed. Now, one thing we have done, as I mentioned, we, we held the line on taxes, and I think that's directly a direct benefit to business. And uh, those are the types of things we're going to be concentrating on, things that we actually, that are tangible and that we can do for small and medium-sized business. So uh, I will continue in that vein. Um, County Library, Park 8 about to open again in May. Uh, I'm just wondering if you're going to have any special events tied to that. I know it's been a long time coming. Uh, the, 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 the people in the county have really missed the library in particular. Um, what I was amazed to find out was at the temporary library, those books, all those books that were in there were the ones that had been checked out and new ones that had come in. I was amazed with how many 
obviously the, the library gets used well because that was a lot of books. Um, so is there any plans for events on that day, grand opening, reopening, I suppose? Well, um, yeah, everybody's really anticipating this date. The library's become the living room, really, of Strathcona County. A lot of activity there, all kinds of goodwill. We're going to be following the library's lead. It's, it's really a separate entity, technically, uh, but we're going to support them all the way. There's gonna be, it's going to be a welcoming back theme, I think, um, because it was a very serious event and um, there was uh, concerns around, it, it's not necessarily a celebration, but for sure it's going to be marked and we'll be supporting the library in whatever way they want to do that. So stay tuned for news on that. All right, a couple lighter ones. Well, maybe not lighter ones. Um, during your tenure as mayor, um, what was the most derisive, divisive um, topic um, that came up with a vote within your council? Uh, most divisive, well, uh, Paul's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> we have it every day, we have something divisive, but... Um, well, I, I'm going to say growth. I'll talk about that in a second. Also, cannabis. Cannabis took up a lot of time. It took up till 2 a.m. one morning to kind of sort that one out. And, of course, it was a product that was illegal for 50 to 100 years and suddenly becomes legal, and people got all kinds of opinions, and from we're going to go to hell in a handcart to uh, we're all doing it anyhow. We might as well legalize it. So uh, it's quite the range of opinions. Um, but we got through it all, still working on a little bit of it. We got through consumption, retail, and we're working a little bit on production. Growth is contentious in the sense that, I mean, it's a good story. We're managing growth. That's what we want to be. We don't want to be managing people leaving the county, but people have different opinions. Where to grow, when to grow, how to grow, how much is it going to cost. Uh, it's, it takes a lot of hard work to work through those issues. We have a very hard-working council. There's a range of opinions. Everybody, at the end of the day, wants to make the best interest for Strathcona County. And um, there's room in a democracy, thank God, for a difference of opinion. So I'm not going to call it divisive, but I'm going to call it heated. I'm going to call it uh, people have different views of it, but we'll get through it all. Excellent. One last question. Um, finally, which, in your term, which particular agenda item has brought you the most pride of accomplishment? Well, I, I think that our council has worked uh, very hard to be inclusive, uh, build relationships with every stakeholder community out there, from business to industry to nonprofits to our schools to other municipalities. I'm really glad to see the other mayors here today. And uh, so I, you know, I, when I look at communities that you have leaderships fighting, when politicians can't get along with business, or when schools feel they're being shortchanged, um, to me that's a failure of leadership. So I'm, I'm happy that we're being very inclusive and uh, that's going to continue. Well, thank you very much, Mayor, for your time. I hope I didn't bore you too much with my questions. Not at all. I like your socks and uh, uh, yeah. it's trendy. Okay. That's the farmer in me. Okay. I think. That wraps it up unless, uh, thank you all. Yeah. I'd like to thank Mayor Rod Frank as an appreciation for speaking today. A donation on your behalf has been made to the Strathcona Food Bank. We have just a few formal announcements and a, our door prizes and that will conclude our luncheon for today. First of all, I'd just like to take a minute and remind everybody about the Breakfast Network on Thursday, April 18th, tomorrow from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. It will be held at the Chamber Office on Ordez Ave. The speaker will be Terry Emsley, the Community Awareness Ambassador, and the topic is Alberta is National Dig Safe Month. Awareness about damage prevention and promote safe digging practices in our region. The Chamber Golf Tournament, the 38th Chamber Golf Tournament on Wednesday, June the 12th. Please watch the Chamber newsletter and social media for registration announcements. There's still space available in the Discover Guide, the 2019-2020 Discover Guide. Uh, please don't hesitate to contact Allie 
at the chamber if you're interested in advertising in that publication. I would like to ask Kathy to come up here and help me with the door prizes. We have five door prizes. Uh, the first one will be from GSS Integrated Energy, which is a gift basket. We have an original Joe's gift card. We have a Shig's flower arrangement, a Sturgeon County gift bag, and a blanket from the volunteer Strathcona. Five, five cards, please. Thank you. Yep. The first winner of the gift bas basket from GSS Integrated Energy, Anna Pandos, Chair for the Library Board Member. Anna. The original Joe's gift card, Don Falk, the Superintendent from New Horizons School. Don. Flower arrangement from Shig's Flowers goes to Susan from Little John's Sign Shop. Here we go. From Sturgeon County, the gift basket, Giselle Wright. Senior Human Resources Business Advisor from the Strathcona County. And our last prize goes to Katie Kish, the Executive Director of Saffron. Katie? Once again, thank you everybody for coming out to our luncheon today. Uh, just a reminder, and please don't hesitate to check the Chamber's website. Our next luncheon is May the 15th, 2019. Thank you, and have a great day.